Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the one and only DJ Storms. Welcome back to the channel here on YouTube.com. It is Thursday, May 21st, 2020. We sit just two days away from AEW Double or Nothing 2. Uh, we're coming towards the end of May. It has, uh, it has, um, been a crazy enough year thus far, and, uh, It, it kind of sucks that I'm doing I'm doing this review with the news that recently just broke yesterday. Um, officers on Venice Beach found a body that washed up on the shore of the same beach in which Shad Shad Gaspard apparently went missing. They have confirmed that it is indeed the body of Shad Gaspard, and unfortunately. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Shad did not make it. It, it really is tough because, you know, this year was, this year was rough enough as it is. And, you know, it just seems as though it just keeps on piling and piling and piling and piling and piling up. I remember, I remember watching uh, Crime Time, Shad Gaspard, and JTG when I first, when I first started watching professional wrestling, and I, I loved what the guys could do. And then after, after they left, I became more wiser, and I started to see how great of a human being Shad Gaspard really was, how compassionate of an individual he really was, how he held his family very, very close to him. He held his friends very, very close to him. Stopped the robbery and. We had this scenario. We had this scenario where he really showed us that he he was one of the most selfless human beings on the face of the planet, and he put his son's life over his own. It's hard for me to look. It's it's even hard for me to look directly into the camera when I'm talking about situations like this. The world, the world lost a brave, compassionate individual, and it, re it really does. It really does goes to show you that, you know, the ro the wrong people are really taken from us way too soon. My thoughts and prayers go out to the friends, the family members, the acquaintances, the associates, everyone associated with Shad Gaspard, and everyone who's met Shad Gaspard. Everyone who's gotten to know Shad Gaspard, everyone who's had an affiliation with Shad Gaspard and has been fortunate enough to get to know such a compassionate individual like him. And I do I do genuinely hope that anyone affected by by this unfortunate tragedy, this unfortunate accident, and I do hope everyone affected by it does find the strength to get through this difficult time. Especially his family. Especially his family. I'm going to do my best to get through the rest of this review for Dark Side of the Ring. We have, uh, we have a lot of content coming this week. We've had a lot of content this week. Um, both in the podcast realm and here on my channel. First things first before we get into the review. Please follow me on Twitter at HistoryMakerDJS. Please follow me on Instagram and Periscope at the DJ Storms. Add me on Facebook as well. Add me on Facebook as well. And please like the official DJ Storms business page and I may just send you an invite to join the official DJ Storms posse group on Facebook. All the links are in the description. For collaborations and business inquiries, please send me an email at stormstakeover at gmail.com. Quarantine with Thunder, episode number eight. That is currently up on the channel right now. That is currently up on the channel right now. If you want to go check that out, please check that out. Um, we got episode nine coming next week. Um, please, please set your calendar dates for tomorrow. 
tomorrow at 3.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Time. The rundown for AEW Double or Nothing 2 will be premiering live on the channel. Uh, you can hear my expertise analysis on everything concerning All Elite Wrestling's second pay-per-view of the year. We have the official Lightning Flash update, flagship show on my channel. That is going to take place on Saturday. It's going to be live at 1 p.m., 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll keep you guys updated there. And the Blue Riot, Blue Riot's going to be my guest. Blue Riot's going to be my guest. We are going to talk about all WWE shows. We're not going to be reviewing AEW Dark or Dynamite, and I will explain why in just a minute. And then we got some news, rumors, and reports to dissect as well. And then on Sunday is, of course, the rewind for Double or Nothing. My review, my takes, my thoughts, my opinions on Double or Nothing 2 and what took or what is going to take place on Saturday. Please hit that thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up, as always. Try and get this video to 20, 25 thumbs up. The brand's been booming. The brand's been on fire since the pandemic has started. I've been uploading like nonstop, and it has been a constant uphill battle to get to 2k trust me it's been an uphill battle to get to 2k for a long long time now but we are this close dj 2k is going to become a reality so i want you to like i want you to comment and i want you to subscribe hit that notifications bell help me become dj 2k before uh the summer officially begins i'm hoping to hit dj 2k probably before nxt take over in your house maybe before backlash we'll see what happens there but i do definitely want to hit 2k before i eventually go back to work um my intestinal disease has been slowly getting better slowly but surely um and last but not least blue riot podcast please i want you guys to go and support blue riot podcast shout out to the blue riot if you want to go follow blue riot on twitter it's blue riot with two t's if you want to go follow the podcast on t on twitter it's blue riot pod um, I've been having a blast doing the Blue Riot podcast with, uh, with Riot, and we actually have two episodes, two new episodes of the Blue Riot podcast up this week. Um, number one was actually a special bonus episode with Joseph Conlin of Big Fight Feel. If you want to go subscribe to him on YouTube, it's Big Fight Feel. Um, he's been doing some great stuff. He's been doing his own reviews of Dark Side of the Ring, Monday Night Raw, NXT. He does news, rumors, and reports on a weekly basis like I do. Uh, we actually predicted the next three AEW World Tag Team, AEW Women's World Champions, and AEW World Champions, and the first five TNT Champions. It was a nice little bonus episode predicting what's to come for AEW and the four championships that they have in the future. If you want to go check that out, that's currently up on Blue Riot Podcast page, on all platforms where you find your podcasts. Um, and then, of course, episode number seven of AEW Darkamite, the Blue Riot Storms review, where him and me, me and Riot specifically, we talk about AEW Dark and AEW Dynamite, and we dissect everything going on on those two shows for the week. That's currently up on all local podcast platforms, whether it be Anchor, whether it be Spotify, iTunes, or Podbean. If you want to go check them out, Go check them out. The link to the iTunes podcast is in the description. So if you have iTunes, please go and subscribe to the Blue Riot podcast on iTunes. If you don't, it's fine. You can look up the Blue Riot podcast on any other local podcast platforms. Thank you again for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. You guys have been helping me keep my sanity or whatever's left of my sanity at this rate because yeah at the end of the day I am kind of I am kind of out of my mind. I am a mad scientist for creating this entire brand, creating this entire persona, creating creating everything DJ Storms related. Anyway, enough of these self brand promotion and advertisements. Let's get straight into the review. Dark side of the ring, the final days of Owen Hart. We all know the story of Owen Hart, and we all know what took place as far as Owen Hart goes, and we all know how great Owen Hart was, undoubtedly one of the best technical wrestlers in the world at that time. He was he was such such a guy ahead of his time, and he had so much potential. He was young, he was athletic, he was hungry, he was so technically sound, came from the Hart family came from the Hart family and Brett Brett really established himself as the biggest breakout star from the from the Hart the Hart family the Hart foundation and he really helped get Owen over 
He helped get Owen over. He fought his younger brother at WrestleMania 10 in what is described in many people's eyes as the greatest opening matchup in WrestleMania history. And that win, that win in that feud with Bret Hart catapulted Owen to new heights, became King of the Ring, Intercontinental Champion, Slammy Award winner, and that obviously resulted in a busier schedule. That eventually eventually resulted in a busier schedule and a more ruthless uh, traveling schedule. And he didn't really want to just be known as Owen Hart, the wrestler. He wanted to realistically have a normal life outside of wrestling. He was a family man first, and good on him. They had a lot of a lot of um, a lot of star-studded guests. Um, they had Jim Cornette in there. They had Jim Ross. They had The Godfather. They had D'Lo Brown, Martha Hart, um, his kids Oge and Athena Hart. And you can tell, you can tell they really had a strong relationship with their father. You could really tell that he was a family man first and he cared so, so much about his family and he would literally do anything for his family, do anything to provide for his family, do anything to make sure that his family had the best possible life and they were able to live the happiest life that they could possibly live. And you really got to respect Owen Hart for that. He never, he never questioned anything as far as the things that he did as far as the company goes he just went along with it because he knew that he was going to he was going to get the money that his family deserved and he was going to get the money to provide for his family and you know build a foundation for his family build a future for his family the attitude era came around and Owen was just a great technical wrestler and they could not find anything so they brought back this blue blazer character the the ripoff of a superhero, this this comedic superhero that he had before he became Owen Hart, Bret Hart's jealous younger brother. And it just goes to show you how lazy WWE was back then that they literally put Owen Hart in a blue cape, singlet, and mask because they literally had nothing else for the best technical wrestler in the world at that time. And in my eyes, I do believe that if this Blue Blazer character, if they never brought back this Blue Blazer character, then I do believe that this incident would have never happened and Owen Hart still would have been alive today. It really was a slap in the face. It was a slap in the face whether you want to admit it or not. And you really can't fault Owen Hart for not wanting to do the storylines with Deborah because he didn't, want to, he didn't want to seem like he was cheating on his wife. Again, he was a family man first. You can't fault him for that. Matter of fact, I don't I don't know how anyone could have anything but respect for Owen Hart. Refusing to do those storylines because he was a family man first and he didn't want to seem like he was cheating on his wife. So at the end of the day, you really can't fault Owen Hart for that. But you can a thousand percent fault fault WWE for putting the Blue Blazer character back into the career of Owen Hart and putting him in a in a stupid blue cape singlet and mask. Just for the simple fact that they had nothing else for him. Killing all the credibility that Owen Hart had. Killing the mystique and killing everything that Owen Hart did prior to the Attitude Era. And they were obviously spoofing Sting. They were spoofing Sting. They were going to have him descent from the, from the rafters. Kind of like Sting descends from the rafters. They were going to have Owen Hart descend from the rafters. And they were going to have Owen Hart descend from the, raffer, the rafters at Over the Edge, 1999. And JR even said that Owen was not his normal energetic self. He was legitimately concerned for his safety, as, as, as I would have been as well. I mean, you're descending 80 feet from the rafters, even even if they say, oh, they're going to hire the best riggers in the world. At the end of the day, it's 80 feet above a catwalk, and you're literally hanging on by a thread, in a sense. It, it, at least it feels like you're hanging on by a thread. So Jimmy Corderas, who's a shill, by the way, but that's another conversation and another story for another time. Jimmy Corderas, he was kicking debris out of the ring. 
He was kicking debris out of the ring and he was holding the top rope when he felt something brush on his shoulder and the back of his head and the rope that he was holding went down and bounced right back out of his hand. JR even got the elbow from Jerry Lawler as they saw Owen Hart fall. And everyone was swarming the ring. Everyone swarmed the ring, tried to get Owen Hart out of the ring, put him in an ambulance and sent him to the hospital. Jerry Lawler's face was ghost white, in the words of D'Lo Brown. And then Kevin Dunn, Kevin Dunn, even back then, even back then, even back then, Kevin Dunn was a dick. Show must go on. Show must go on, and he gave JR the unfortunate responsibility of announcing the death of Owen Hart. Blue Blazer. Vince called up Martha. Martha was directed to the doctor, and the doctor had to break the unfortunate news that that uh, Owen Hart had died. He had he had fallen. I can't imagine what his kids were thinking at that time, and I can't imagine being Martha Hart and having to break the news to to um, your kids who are now fatherless. So they traveled, they traveled to, they then traveled to the place. They traveled to Over the Edge and they walked the catwalk and they saw the, they saw the little, the little hook, the little harness, the harness that barely could even support a 240 pound individual. And right then, right then and there, it just goes to show you that WWE, WWE never cared about the safety of Owen Hart. WWE still doesn't care about the safety of their competitors. Vince McMahon doesn't care about the safety of his competitors. Vince McMahon only cares about how much money he's making and how, how much of a profit he's getting at the end of the night as far as the show goes. And it, it, in my eyes, it was pure negligence. Pure negligence. Pure neglect for the safety of an individual who did everything that he was supposed to do for a company that didn't give a shit about his well-being to begin with. Now, now... While I'm on the side of Martha Hart there, the tactics that she did use and the, the way that she went about suing the company, I understand the suit, but them not taking a settlement, them not taking a settlement wanting $35 million, them having to get a new lawyer, which I don't believe was said, The, the way that they went about it, I understand the frustrations and I understand the way the way that one would feel and I would feel the same way, but the way that she went about things caused her to lose a relationship with Brett and it really it, it really took things to a different type to a different level and she almost would have would have gotten out with nothing. I understand that she wanted justice, but it, it really is a tough scenario to think about. It's a tough scenario to think about. There's layers upon layers upon layers when it comes to an incident like this. You know, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny how it all how it all works out. I, I do believe, however, that WWE could have saved Owen Hart. And their negligence of his physical well being and the, the decision to just continue on with the show instead of stopping the show after you just had an unfortunate accident like that and you just elected to continue the show. You just elected to continue the show after someone fell from the rafters 80 feet and probably died within the ring before they even got into the ambulance. You had, you had the incident with New Jack, who's pretty much a felon, where he literally threw someone off a scaffold and he said he was legitimately trying to kill the guy and the guy landed on the ropes and made it out with a with a broken ankle meanwhile Owen Hart in this unfortunate accident fell fell 80 feet landed on the ropes and WWE barely even made an effort to save him 
And they barely even showed that they even cared about the guy. And they continued on with the show in that scenario. And please, please do not even give me the excuse of what were they supposed to do. They weren't living in a pandemic like we are now. They don't need... They don't need to continuously putting on shows. They're already losing enough money as it is now. Yes, I understand that, but they may they maybe would have lost they maybe would have lost a little bit of money at that time. And yes, people would have complained, but at the end of the day, that's just one show. This isn't six, seven months worth of shows. This would have been one show that they would have canceled early and they would have stopped early for the safety of one of the people that gave their life for them. Gave their entire life for the business. You know, Jim Cornette, I'm not a big Jim Cornette guy. I'm very indifferent to Jim Cornette. I, I, he, he really does not understand the modern day concept of pro wrestling, but I can't help but feel for Jim Cornette. And you can definitely sense that Jim Cornette feels strongly about Brett. He's worked with Brett. He's managed Brett. Uh, no, not Brett, Owen. He's managed Owen Hart. And he had a strong relationship with Owen Hart. I don't think I've ever seen Jim Cornette get that emotional. Owen Hart. Owen Hart, he does deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely, he does. I, I, I don't think that anyone would disagree with me on that. If you are a wrestling fan, you know for a fact that Owen Hart ha and everything that he's given and everything that he's done, you know for a fact that Owen Hart is a thousand percent worthy of being in the WWE Hall of Fame. But based on everything that's going on, I fully stand behind Martha Hart as far as the decision not, not to have Owen Hart in the Hall of Fame. Mainly because of the fact, I, I know for a fact that if I was in her position, I would not want a relative, an associate, an acquaintance, a friend. I would not want anyone affiliated with a company that neglected his physical well-being for, for a pay-per-view that could have easily been shut down one night one pay-per-view that could have been canceled early. Yes, people would have complained, but at the end of the day, one pay-per-view being cut short isn't going to kill a billion-dollar company. And I do firmly stand behind Martha Hart when she chooses not to allow Owen to be glorified by the same company that neglected his safety. This was... This was undoubtedly the most emotional episode of Dark Side of the Ring that I think I've ever watched. You know, we were five minutes in, and they were talking about they were talking about what Owen Hart meant to them and what 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 Owen Hart meant as as a man and as a father. They were really pulling on the heartstrings very very early, and it's it's uh, it, it's definitely a tough scenario. Again, I don't really agree with the extent that Martha Hart went to 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 fight for justice. Trust me, I want I would want justice too, and I would want I would want my my husband or my wife if if I was married at the time and I and that happened. I would I would want justice. I would want justice for them, but. It's 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 a shaky scenario. It really is a shaky scenario to talk about. I I uh, I don't really have too many words for it as far as it goes. I do I do agree one thousand percent. They should have stopped the show. They should have stopped the show. They should have ended the show. Sent people home early. Focused solely on making sure that Owen was okay, and they did not. They neglected his safety. They also neglected the safety of him by having that small little hook try and support a 240 pound man and they they pretty much thought that hey nothing could go wrong nothing could go wrong with the WWE they did they just didn't care they just didn't care even if something went wrong they wouldn't have cared the fact that they they pretty much forced JR in a sense they pretty much backed JR in a corner to announce the Death of Owen Hart live on pay per view. That 
I'll say it again. Does Owen Hart deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? You damn right he does. There's I don't think there's a single person that would that would object to Owen Hart being in the Hall of Fame based on everything that he has done and everything he's accomplished and the legacy that he's built. Beating Bret Hart, becoming King of the Ring, Intercontinental Champion. He got the Slammy Awards over, for Christ's sakes. But after what happened, I stand by Martha. I stand by Martha, and I, I do not think that Martha should allow him in the Hall of Fame, and I believe that she's doing the right thing in this scenario. It really is a tough scenario to look back on, and I'm, I'm not an emotional guy. I'm really not an emotional guy. You guys know this firsthand. If you're close friends and family members of mine, you know for a fact that I hate showing emotion. I hate showing my human side. I, I, I hate putting myself out there in a vulnerable position, but this 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 is perhaps the, the hardest thing for me to talk about. This 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 specific topic for Dark Side of the Ring was the hardest thing for me to talk about outside of outside of Chris Benoit Owen Hart Owen Hart was the was one of one of the best that professional wrestling has ever seen period and if Owen Hart is not if Owen Hart is not in one of your best wrestlers of all time list I really don't know I really don't know what to tell you at that I really don't know what to tell you at that Owen Hart. Owen Hart was the victim of an unfortunate accident. He was the victim of the negligence of a company that just doesn't care for the safety of their superstars, and they still don't. That's pretty much how I can describe it. The documentary itself was incredible. The documentary itself was great. Probably, probably the second best one out of season two. First one still being Benoit. In my eyes, I really do think that they should have split it up into two. Because I do think that they would have gotten a lot more information. They would have gone into a lot more detail as far as the whole story goes. But for what we got, the hour that we got, it was an excellent documentary. Dark Side of the Ring, in my eyes, the blueprint for the Picture Perfect Wrestling documentary. Owen Hart is definitely going to be missed. And um, that's pretty much all I can say about that. It really is. It really is tough to talk about. I, I really, I really don't do well with talking about situations like this. So I apologize if I come off, I come off as, as a little unprepared because I don't do these with notes. I, I, I do this completely off the top of my head. I do this off the top of my head, out of character. It really is a tough scenario. It really is a tough scenario to think about. All I can say is that I do s still firmly stand behind Martha Hart. Owen Hart is not going in the Hall of Fame. He's not going to be glorified by a company that neglected his own safety. But ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this edition of Dark Side of the Ring Review. I would like to thank each and every single one of you who tuned into this video. Thank you to everyone watching. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting me. Shout out to, shout out to Sarah. Sarah from Australia. I know she's watching. Um, she has been one of my biggest supporters of the Dark Side of the Ring reviews. And she actually just lost a friend of hers. She actually just lost a friend of hers. So my thoughts and prayers go out to her. I know that she hasn't been very active on social media. So I know she's going through a rough time. I truthfully hope that... I truthfully hope that she's okay. Best regards to you. I love you, Sarah. I hope that... I hope that you are doing okay. I hope you're staying safe. Thank you to everyone else as well. Thank you to everyone else who's um, who's a supporter of mine, who's a subscriber of mine. You know what to do. Check out all the links in the description. Check out all the links in the description. Like, comment, subscribe. And this has been Dark Side of the Ring Review, the final days of Owen Hart. I will catch you guys tomorrow for the rundown for AEW Double or Nothing 2. You guys have a great Tuesday. Or excuse me. A great Thursday.